Social media is the lifeblood of our daily lives. We're emotionally triggered 24 seven by posts and memes we see on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. But social media lacks context, which is why I'm here. My name is Crystal Jordan, and it's time for a social conversation with clarity. Let's get crystal clear. Hello and welcome to Let's Get Crystal Clear. I'm your host, Crystal Jordan. We focus on social media topics and cultural conversations that often don't have context because we're reading memes and pictures on social media. So today's conversation is, is today's woman in charge of her sexuality or is she controlled by it? We see rappers like Meg Thee Stallion, Mulatto, and the City Girls leading with their sexuality. We see young ladies on Instagram and influencers constantly leading with their sexuality. And we need to ask the question, is this pushing us forward or is this taking us back? Joining me today are Dr. Clarissa Hall and Dr. Wendasha Jenkins. And we are talking about some of the issues and images that we see in today's social media landscape that definitely suggest that women's value is tied up in their sexuality. Is this allowing us to control our sexuality and truly be free? Or are we playing into the patriarchal society from before that we've all been trying so hard to escape? We get into it right after this break. So ladies, is today's woman defined by her sexuality or is she in charge of it? What is, when you just think of that topic off the rip, what is your first response to that question? Who, um, I will say <laughs> that is a very, um, complicated answer. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, because it's not really a black and white, yeah. right. And how we even, um, look at sexuality. So yes, we can be in control of it, but depending on what we do, we, we may be victims to it. So mm -hmm. that's a very, it's a very messy thing. Cause it's like mm -hmm. a lot of nuances. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I agree. Now I was going to say, um, often it is, I have various answers, you know, for this question. <laughs> and I think like in real life, because often people are bringing up what we see in art, mm -hmm. you know, um, but something that we see and something like what my work is surrounded by is that we are redefining what that means for us. You know, mm -hmm. what is sex, what's sexy for me was, you know, defining my sexuality, expressing myself when um, like much of my work is, um, I focus on the history of black women's bodies and sexuality mm -hmm. where we have not had these liberties, mm -hmm. where our bodies were used for the benefit of others, you know, to make profit for their pleasure, mm -hmm. you know, and abuse, you know, and now to even have those like Megan and the city girls and others and, you know, and those in real life, you know, and um, to be able to freely express themselves and people don't like it, yeah. you know, but oftentimes, <laughs> you know, as we are liberated, there are going to be some people who are not okay with it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Well, it seems like the majority are okay with it, right? Mainstream <laughs> culture is okay with it. We were talking, we were talking before the show started about how, you know, for a female rapper, Mm -hmm. to be able to cross over and go mainstream right now, mm -hmm. the, the call is to lead with sexuality, mm -hmm. right? So we see there are artists and MCs that are not doing that, but they're probably not in rotation on your favorite radio station. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones that are getting the opportunities to do brand deals and, mm -hmm. and things like that. The, the, the ones that are celebrated in mainstream culture are the young ladies that are leading with their sexuality. We showed mm -hmm. some lyrics earlier from, the city girls, you know, the prolific, the very prolific city girls, and also Meg the Stallion, Mulatto, mm -hmm. all these uh, young, beautiful uh, rappers. But the I would say probably ninety percent of their content is focused on their bodies and mm -hmm. on their sexuality. And so I'm asking you all, what is the difference if if we say a male dominated society is is demanding for us mm -hmm. to do this? Or are we choosing to do it because we want to? Do we even know the difference between, you know, trying to please someone mm -hmm. or trying to be accepted or doing what we truly genuinely feel? So I think the key word and what you just said is choosing. So when mm -hmm. we think about being sex positive and mm -hmm. sexually liberated, it's all about choice. And I think what we have now um, when you said that a lot of times we think about what we see in art, so what we see in music, what we see in television, what we see, you know, all on social media, mm -hmm. we really have reduced sex positivity and sexual liberation 
to having a lot of sex, the abundance of sex. So mm -hmm. if you're open, you're free, that means, okay, you're just willing to do any and everything mm -hmm. with <laughs> any and everybody, however you want to do it. Now, if that is something that you choose and want to do, if you say, hey, I choose to go out and I choose to share myself with others in this way. So I dress this way because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I have sex with these individuals or um, whoever I have sex with because I feel good and I like to feel good and I'm making them feel good. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. However, what we don't see on the other side is those who say, hey, I don't want to have a lot of sex. I don't want to, you know, have multiple partners and that's okay. I don't want to wear the bikini when I go out. I want to be more covered up. That's sex positive as well because they are making that choice to do so. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what I feel that we see a lot of times in the media when you see like female rappers, they're dressing a certain way so that they can get views and likes. Right. So then it's kind of like, okay, so are you doing this because this is who you are? This is who, you know, what you have established for yourself? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing this because it was set forth by my promotion company or my record company that I have to look a certain way? So I have to have my hair a certain way. I have to have a certain size boobs. Okay. I have to have the butt, right? In order to really get that male gaze, mm -hmm. right? So even though they're female artists, I would probably go as far as to say their music is mostly consumed by men their image is mostly consumed by men so that's what they may be appealing to now, i can't speak personally for them but i have not had a conversation with men today and all the city girls but it is about that gaze it is about what can i do to make sure that the eyes stay on me so mm -hmm. it's it really comes down to who's actually controlling the image who's controlling the image so i think yeah I want to I want to ask you, Doctor Clarissa, because you're mm -hmm. you're right. There, this is we talk about music artists, mm -hmm. and that those become role models for a lot of young people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But today, anyone with an Instagram, anyone can start an OnlyFans account, mm -hmm. and we understand that across the board, even with, even outside of sexuality, attention is probably the number one thing that most people are trying to get. You know, it helps mm -hmm. you it helps you get. Uh, your business going it can it can some people mm. feel like it can validate them in certain ways mm. so when we see women that are you know not necessarily a rapper or an artist but women that just say i want to express myself this way i open mm. an only fans account because mm. i realize this gets attention for me mm -hmm. is there a danger dr clarissa in looking for attention and that type of um response solely focused on your sexuality and how we're able to use it. Cause we see that that's the number one way for females online to be able to get attention is that's a very quick way and easy way to be able to, sh you know, show your body. Okay. Um, so really to be honest, just existing as a woman can have dangers, you know, it can be dangerous. And, um, so you, before you ask if there's a difference between, you know, uh, claiming your sexuality or it actually being, you know, for a purpose. And so it's something that um, I was speaking on. So womanism is a, it's a um, concept uh, like, you know, we have feminism, black feminism, um, mm -hmm. but womanism is something where one of the components is both and, mm -hmm. you know, and so something that I um, claim to be is multifaceted. Because um, while I am Dr. Francis, I am also a, a identify as a sexually liberated person. I love to twerk. I twerk my way th through my <laughs> program. I twerk as a therapy. You know, I do other things also. You know, but depending on when someone meets me, you know, um, they may see me as professor. You know, in one space, I was like, oh, she probably does. You know. Um, probably don't even know what twerking or who <laughs> somebody is. They know who they know. I know who Megan is because I'm gonna bring up Megan in my, <laughs> you know, in whatever I'm talking about, uh, whether it's Black studies or women's studies. Um, but but something um, when you talk about the danger of it is, you know, I challenge us, you know, to think of when you see someone. Um, whether you know if they have on this bikini, you know, mm -hmm. as you said, or they got they, you know. Um, you know, breast style, but whatever, looking nice. You know, you probably think they actually look nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then you um, decide why they're doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we do a lot. Um, Megan Thee Stallion, actually, she wrote a op-ed in the New York Times mm -hmm. where she says, while um, 
people think that this is something that I'm doing for others. And she uh, specifically says the male gaze, mm-hmm. this is something I'm doing for myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because I feel good and regardless, you know, of, and this is something I know to be true and some of us know to be true, regardless mm-hmm. of what I have on, there is a danger, mm-hmm. you know, and could be fully dressed because sometimes that's a response, mm-hmm. you know, because of the danger, you know, of just mm-hmm. existing, yes. you know, of someone, you know, of, um, of being attacked or, Mm -hmm. you know, potentially being harmed, you know, fully dressed, you know? And Mm -hmm. so when I hear, um, when I hear, you know, um, you know, conversations or when people are critiquing those because of what they're wearing, it sounds like when somebody, when, um, someone, um, specifically a woman says, uh, comes out that they have been assaulted, you know, mm-hmm. or something has happened. And then it's also like, well, what were you wearing? Mm-hmm. What were you mm-hmm. doing? Mm-hmm. Why did you do this? And it's just like, wait, mm-hmm. how did we take out the person who's causing the harm mm-hmm. out of that? So it's, I think we focus a lot of uh, energy, you know, and time on those who identify, whether we agree with it or not, mm-hmm. that they're sexually li- liberated or they're doing mm-hmm. what they want to do and mm-hmm. they're controlling their mm-hmm. image. But what about those others, those who may cause harm and using this mm-hmm. as like as as their justification for it, mm-hmm. you know, and it, that's, I hope, you know, mm-hmm. along with this, this is something yeah. that I love, you know, a uh, high girl. That's what, you know, identify <laughs> as a high girl movement because I took this personal like this is personal. I grew up in a church. So church girl, uh-huh. Beyonce's church girl, like, yes, it's like grew up in a church and I'm a whole the real high girl doc. Like I'm going to talk about <laughs> sexuality and like, you know, family still heavily in the church and just probably found out deeply of what some of the things that I, <laughs> that I talk about, you know, so some of that came with growing up in the church with, uh, these negative messages around my body, uh-huh. you know, shaming myself, feeling like I was this freak, you know, or this, uh, something's wrong with me because like, no, I want to actually have like, I'm actually interested, you know, in exploring my sexuality, um, but I don't have anyone to talk to. And if I talk about something or if I wear a certain something and it brings on certain attention, it's something I did wrong. And so this is something that we carry on and as yeah. adults, you know, and so while we um, we feel that those who may wear less clothing you know, are more sexually explicit are the ones that are responding to this trauma. You also have those who cover up for this same reason, Yeah. you know, and I, I don't think we talk enough about that. Um, and so I'm, you know, as you know, I'm here for it, you know, <laughs> but I also do think that we can have more conversations, about it, yes. you know, about it, what it means just because I'm saying I'm sexually liberated and I define it as, um, bodily autonomy. So control of the body, mm-hmm. um, agency, you mm-hmm. know, making decisions as it relates to sex, the type mm-hmm. of sex you want, mm-hmm. how many partners you yes. want, and actually want to enjoy it, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and then then that's where pleasure comes in, sexual pleasure. Yeah. And so these are things and conversation that we haven't always been able to have, yes. you know, and have access to. Mm-hmm. And so this is it's the pursuit of sexual liberation because mm-hmm. these are things we're fighting for mm-hmm. in so many ways, but, you know, at different levels, personally, in our relationships, mm-hmm. um, you know, so definitely just, uh, it can be dangerous, but not necessarily because of what I'm wearing, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but just because of, uh, this idea or the belief that my body is not my own, mm-hmm. you know, and somebody could tell me what why I, yeah, yeah, what I'm what doing to do with my body. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So in that, in that same, uh, vein, ladies, I'm wondering, I love the idea of knowing that, you know, sexual liberation doesn't mm-hmm. have to look a certain way. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, I, it's interesting because we have a lot of shows that show explicit sexuality and a lot of, a lot of young women are talking about this, but then you have intimate conversations mm-hmm. and you hear that even though we're a lot more sexually liberated, women are not exactly enjoying pleasure. They're not, they're not getting pleasure from sexual intercourse mm-hmm. any differently than they were before. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So we're, we're exploring, but a lot of times what it looks like on the outside may not necessarily be translating mm-hmm. to the bedroom. And I know both of you guys do a mm-hmm. lot of work to help women to really get in touch with themselves mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. of what they're showing to the world, whether mm-hmm. you, you know, are covered from head to toe or you're come out, you know, twerking that thong. Mm-hmm. We still want to make sure that women are exploring and understanding that part of themselves mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we Mm -hmm. talk about black women being very uncomfortable with their own body still, even Mm -hmm. though they're sharing it often Mm -hmm. with others still in those intimate spaces with them alone are not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So how do we make sure that we're actually enjoying sex, Mm -hmm. getting pleasure from sex for the right reasons Mm -hmm. 
regardless of what we're showing the public, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I will say that we always have to go back to how women are typically socialized. Mm -hmm. So we're socialized to be givers. We're socialized to be um, nurturers. We're Mm -hmm. socialized to be pleasers. Mm -hmm. So we will take that into the bedroom. So yes, Mm -hmm. you can be covered from head to toe or you can have on the thong and pasties. Mm -hmm. It does not matter. But I'm pretty sure you've probably heard of... um, heard someone say, I get pleasure from seeing my partner being mm-hmm, pleased, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So while that's the case, you you know, you, mm-hmm. you, you are making someone else feel good, but mm-hmm. in the moment, we're also forgetting about our own needs as well, mm-hmm. right? So are our needs being met and are we empowered enough to mm-hmm. speak up and say, hey, this is how I like to be touched. This is how, you know, I want you to put me in this position, do me that way. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're afraid to speak up because we tell ourselves, oh, he, you know, he came. Um, Mm -hmm. That means the sex was good, but was it good for you? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times just because, like you say, you can show your body, you are, you can choose not to show your body, but sometimes we are living in these bodies, but we may not be familiar with them ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? Do you even know how you feel yourself? Have you touched yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you felt yourself before? And if not, if you don't know how your body experiences pleasure, it's very hard for you to even communicate that in the bedroom. Yeah. So that's where we have to start. We have to start really understanding our bodies first, Mm -hmm. filling out who we are, understanding what our pleasure is and where it comes from. What do you think? No, I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, And something that I'm uh, very adamant about is Mm self-pleasure, you know, about exploring. Like it helped me, you know, personally Mm -hmm. explore. As I was exploring others, I was learning to explore myself, Mm -hmm. you know. And so this is something I have a conversation uh, with women when they're saying like, well, how do I, you know, enjoy sex or what? should I do to be more, you know, in the mood or I want to try some things. And, you know, I'm like, well, do you, do you pleasure yourself? You masturbate? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I just feel like, you know, cause I know something, a belief that I had, it was like, well, if I have a partner, why do I need to uh-huh. sell pleasure? And it's just like you said, um, uh, with just exploring yourself, looking at yourself, mm-hmm. looking at your, you know, and this is yeah. benefit your, um, Examining your own vagina, vulva, your body, mm-hmm. you know, is so important for so many reasons, for mm-hmm. health reasons, so you can know what's normal, not normal, mm-hmm. but also like what feels good. Like yes. I, um, a, a sister friend and I, we teach a, a self pleasure mapping mm-hmm. a workshop where we encourage, you know, exploring yourself, touching. Mm-hmm. This is something usually taught to explore with your partner. Like, how do you like this? Like, ooh, if I do this, you know, and you do that with yourself, imagine, you know, you practice and just like yes. anything, practice you know, can make improvement. I heard, I just heard, um, instead of perfect, you know, you can improve that, yes. you know, and actually uh, speaking of behind, I guess, closed doors or what's not public. I've I also have conversations with men, you know, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. um, complain about their partners not being sexually expressive or right. open and right. not initiating sex and themselves not feeling desired, mm-hmm. you know, and so and then turn around and maybe the ones to critique the women <laughs> who are sexually expressive and open and just yeah. like, hmm, it, that's it interesting. Is, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, such a, it's such a weird um, um, it's a weird phenomenon because you have young women who can, we can quote the, the lyrics for WAP, mm-hmm. but we're not necessarily in touch or exploring our bodies. I had a male friend tell me a lot of times that women that are, you know, if you go to a strip club, a lot of these women are gorgeous and they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're giving this fantasy, but yet they get in the bed and they're not, they're, they're you know, they're not, uh, initiating sex mm-hmm. in a way that is, 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 um, reciprocal, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's transactional, right? Mm-hmm. So how do, how do we help women to be able to, if you're going to share and, and you feel liberated in one area, but make sure that that also is, is benefiting you as well. How can we start to change that? that narrative. And I know a lot of it does come from how most of us were raised. It's yeah, either yeah. we're raised. I know I was raised in the church where it was like, Oh, Crystal, <laughs> because you're built like this, you can't wear this and you mm-hmm, can't do that. Mm-hmm. And that gives you a sense of shame. Mm-hmm. So then later you're like, I don't want that. I'm going the opposite way, but yet we've still missed the reason behind, you know, why it's so important for us to be able to get to that point. So how do we, how do we start to change the dynamic of this? I would say first you have to you have to engage in some self reflection before you even get in the bedroom mm-hmm. to say, oh I want to feel this way or I want to feel that way. You have to stop and think, okay, 
why do I believe the certain things I believe about myself and my body? Mm -hmm. Like who gave that to me? Who gave me that baggage? Who gave me possibly that trauma? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have to do because one thing I think that we don't talk about enough is that some of how we react sexually can be trauma that is resurfacing, right? Mm -hmm. So whether that is from bad relationships or toxic relationships, whether that's from the church, mm -hmm. you have some church hurt, whether that's from the family or wherever that may be, we have to really unpack a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And once we start to really unpack and say, we have to ask ourselves, who am I sexually and who do I want to be mm -hmm. sexually? And so in understanding that, so yeah, exploring your body, masturbating, mm -hmm. touching mm -hmm. yourself. Because when we do all of these studies, we find that women tend to masturbate our self-pleasure less than men, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. men are Definitely. taught to do that. They're taught to do that. that. That's what you do, right? But women's mm -hmm. like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> but so even in exploring that, but then saying, okay, am I into any type of kinks or fetishes? Because we, mm -hmm. we tend not talk about that either. We mm -hmm. tend to only talk about, okay, P and V. So putting that penis in that vagina, but mm -hmm. what are some other things that we may like, right? Mm -hmm. I may be, I may be want to be bondage or tied up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean to me? And how can I find a safe space to explore that and find partners who I can safely explore that side of my sexuality yeah. mm -hmm. with? That's what we have to start doing. So it's really working to break out of that mindset mm -hmm. that sex is wrong, sex is dirty, mm -hmm. sex is nasty, or I can only have sex within the confines of a relationship. And if I'm not, I'm a hoe, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Like, that no, like I can have safe sex, sexual experiences, pleasure, sex, um, pleasurable experiences with anybody I want to, as long as it is consensual, mm -hmm. as long as we are both, you know, safe, as long as we are both protecting our mind, body, and our spirit. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back to that, but I want to, when we come back from this break, I want to talk about how the Me Too movement change things. Did that help? Did that affect? Because much of that movement was based on the fact that women were over-sexualized in the workplace and we put a stop to that. But how did that affect how women see themselves? We're going to come right back with more on women's sexuality and how we can start to change this narrative in a way that actually helps women, you know, in addition to allowing us to express ourselves. All right, we're coming right back with Dr. Clarissa and Dr. Wendasha, and we're going to talk more about how the Me Too movement did it help women's libera sexual liberation or did it cause additional problems? Stay right there. This is Let's Get Crystal Clear. And we are back with Let's Get Crystal Clear. And I'm still here with my guests, Dr. Clarissa and Dr. Wendasha. And both of these ladies um, uh, have their PhD in sex education and are hosting conversations constantly on this. And we're talking a little bit about how do we as black women, how can we change the narrative about sex positivity? How can we change the narrative about sexual liberation? I want to ask both of you all, the Me Too movement was huge. And I think changing the way um, the opportunities for women, right, in the workplace and for women to actually be able to stand up and say, this happened to me and this was not okay. I think a lot of things that men didn't even realize uh, they were doing. And, it, and it, it definitely brought a lot of light on across the board from entertainment to, mm -hmm. to corporate Everyone was dealing with issues and some may be more exaggerated than others. But do you think that the Me Too movement helped women in terms of being able to feel more comfortable in their sexuality and not to feel so victimized when it comes to the workplace and for, you know, for the way men interact with them at work? So um, the Me Too movement really was about women saying we do not want to be sexually harassed or we don't want this um, unwanted sexual attention, especially while we're in our workplace. So we want our workplaces um, to be safe. We want them to be um, equitable without having to you know, deal with these um, powers that be mm -hmm. that say, hey, if you want to get into this position or you want to get into this film, you have to do some type of sexual favor. And so it really also was about, like we spoke during the break, it's about choice. Right. So choosing if I want to engage in this sexual activity with you, I will let you know. I will say yes. If not, no. Mm -hmm. Respect my no. Mm -hmm. But I think with the Me Too movement, yes, we have focused a lot on I'm telling women you have these rights. You have these um, things that you can do in the workplace to ensure your safety. However, um, what what is the education for men or those who are perpetuating this harm uh -huh. on women? So it's like we're always telling women, stay safe, stay, stay safe. This is what you need to do. Uh -huh. But what are we doing to stay? stop this cycle mm -hmm. so right. that we don't continually have women have to come forward and say 
me too or I was assaulted as well or mm-hmm. um, I was violated as mm-hmm. as well so I think that that's the other side to mm-hmm. it that we need to talk a little bit more about I think mm-hmm. I think we definitely have uh, some issues because I've talked to so many men that are like at this point I don't know what to do mm-hmm. right <laughs> like she you know I don't even know if I can compliment a woman I don't know if I you know should should say anything as far as she looks nice. And then also men saying, how do I know if a woman makes a move on me? How do I know? You know, she says something to me that's flirtatious. Do I respond back? You know, mm-hmm. I've heard that across the board from men saying, now we don't know what to do. We're on, during the break, uh, Clarissa, you talked about how, how can we start to educate men? Cause so mm-hmm. many of them did not realize things were as bad as they were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, uh, well, one thing uh, with that is because it was it's normalized. Like when we was having a conversation about um, the woman's body, even a young girl's body, you know, it being for the benefit for others, mm-hmm. you know, for whether it's the gaze, the touch, um, you know, or whatever. Um, and now, so I would say it maybe made it mixed things up a bit, you know, of now that you know people coming out sharing their stories. But in a way, like I would argue that it strengthened you know, the mm-hmm. sexual liberation movement, um, because in order to speak on what you want, you know, um, and actually having the power, having the tools to do that, you also need to know what you do not want mm-hmm. and actually feeling empowered enough to say, this is not what I want. And and I would, um, you know, also challenge, I'm always challenging people, maybe an assignment, <laughs> being an educator, you know, even having conversations, if men actually had conversations with the women in their lives, partners, and asked them about some experiences in their lives, because mm-hmm. um, um, as Dr. Wendasha uh, mentioned, like what, when you ask, what can we do um, to encourage, you know, uh, women being sexually liberated is uh, reflecting, thinking mm-hmm. back to those messages that you receive some of those experiences that inform mm-hmm. how you are today. And so I think of uh, being a young girl walking, also being shapely, you mm-hmm. know, a young girl um, and encouraged to not show my shape and wearing mm-hmm. certain things where I went through a phase where I was wearing baggy clothes, but it was kind of early 2000s. So it was kind of <laughs> in, um, but still not until I became an adult, you know, later being more comfortable, mm-hmm. but walking down the street, knowing that there, I'm going to get some attention, you know, regardless of what I'm wearing, mm-hmm. whether I'm wearing shorts, jeans or whatever just mm-hmm. because i'm walking down the street i'm gonna get you know these called cat calls mm-hmm. or you know people potentially someone may be stopping their car you know i've had different incidents you know where having to actually get out of situations you yeah. know mm-hmm. whether you know whatever the reason in the first place mm-hmm. you know and so something um i was talking to dr Wendasha about like i have nephews you know and so Thinking about while I'm all for hot girl shit and, you know, the liberation movement, I want to also, part, you know, um, encourage and participate in raising young boys and men to not mm-hmm. be those that cause this harm mm-hmm. that we are trying to heal from, yes. mm-hmm. you know, and so teaching them early on about consent. If I don't want to hug, I said no. You know, like, I know you mm-hmm. want to hug, but I said no. Yeah, and you have to respect that. And, yeah. and earlier on being um, able to... Um, deal with rejection, yes. you know, and also yes. encouraging young boys because uh, I work with a lot of college students and I would offer consent uh, workshops, and, you know, letting them know. And also uh, as a I've done a lot of work in HIV uh, education, AIDS awareness. Mm-hmm. So testing, you know, and so asking a lot of questions about their sexual um, behaviors and, you know, different things. And I actually had conversations with um, young men where they felt that because of being the being a male in mm-hmm. the situation, that they it's just assumed that they want to have sex. Mm-hmm. So there's times when men are having sex or but young boys want. are mm-hmm. having sex or, you know, and they don't even they're not even okay. consenting. Mm-hmm. So something mm-hmm. that I um, I guess appreciate about this movement, although we had conversations about, you know, it's a little tricky, you know, with certain uh, aspects of it, um, but. It empowers those to like actually think like, hmm, how do I feel about this experience? Not just women or the mm-hmm. girl, you know, mm-hmm. boys and men too. Because you've seen, I've seen, um, it's been hearing a lot of uh, artists, you know, or men, black men, even coming out saying like, yeah, 
there was a situation that happened with my babysitter or this older woman. Yes, that is. And it was yeah. like, now, looking back, like, this was not okay. Yes. You know, and so... I think we've well, never allowed yeah. men, especially black men, the space to say if they were victimized, mm-hmm. you know, sexually. Because we've done D. Ray Davis, actually yeah. Mike mm-hmm. Tyson, mm-hmm. you know, lots of men that you yeah. would, you know, just we don't see that that mm-hmm. presented, uh, that, that image of, of victim. They yes. seem like, you know a man that is in control and, and definitely for them to come out and, and acknowledge that is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, so it looks like sexual sexual energy and liberation can be misconstrued on both sides. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So P-Valley is one of the shows that everyone loves talking about, right? We love yes. chatting yes. about yes. and there's, and, and the show, it seems sex and sexuality are two of the things that mm-hmm. really drive that show. What has been your experience? What have, what have you heard from the show that what, that you think is sex positive? Because there's, there's a lot of sex happening at Pew. At Chuckaloosa. It's a lot yes. happening at Chuckaloosa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Very quickly, what, what do you think the impact of Pea Valley is on the pop culture's conversation on sex? So, one, I really think that the obvious is the relationship between Uncle Clifford and um, no, Lil Murder. <laughs> like the fact that we see queer black men having sex on television is groundbreaking and it has received a lot of controversial response but we typically mm-hmm. have not seen that mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that's one thing but also understanding that everyone in the show is on their own journeys their own their own paths mm-hmm. so yes they're in a strip club yes we have that element of the rap music but it gets a lot more deeper than that we're looking at mm-hmm. interracial relationships with miss mississippi and mm-hmm. her man we're looking mm-hmm. at mercedes and her daughter you know becoming a teen mother herself and so it really is a lot so this is like really a case study of black sexuality in the mm-hmm. south mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what it means, you know, in this day and Mm -hmm. age, like how we deal with our sexuality, especially with the with the um, roulette and that colorism. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the girl with the dick sucking lips, like, okay, so you're good enough Mm -hmm. to suck my dick. But the light skinned girl, I eat her. Yeah. No, just Mm -hmm. those conversations. So Mm -hmm. what like what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a lot deeper than people because people just looking at the gay. say, oh, God, it's two gay men. Mm -hmm. But it's deeper. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. The NP ballot to unpack. Mm-hmm. It is definitely a lot to unpack, but I think it's this is the benefit of shows like that is it gets us talking. And, mm-hmm. and you're right, it, de- it dealt with so many different issues within our culture that we all understand. Mm-hmm. That conversation about the dick sucking was, we all have heard that before, yes. right? We yes. knew what that was. Yeah. But I love mm-hmm. the fact that it's being brought to the forefront and we are able to have conversations like these. We're getting ready to take a break. We come back, and I want to make sure that we give you guys information on these two amazing ladies you can follow them and get more from them this is just a tip of the iceberg there's so much more in this conversation needs to be had so stay right there we're on our way right back this is let's get crystal clear all right we are back with let's get crystal clear and we're getting crystal clear about all types of sexual misunderstandings and concepts and actually what happens down at the pink that's what we were talking about before we went to break it's what's happening at the pink with 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 uh with little murder and mercedes all these different and, and it's it's caused so much conversation on social media mm. because you do have a lot of these myths and stereotypes being unearthed for us to actually face right mm-hmm. so we were talking about the idea of women's sexuality being showing up in their aesthetic right so mm-hmm. lips that look like they would perform oral sex great right mm-hmm. or or she got a fat ass so that means that that she do but i think men also are stereotyped According to, you know, we see the whole idea of the big black buck, right? Mm -hmm. So he looks like he's virile, he's sexual, he's supposed to be this way. And if a guy is not in that energy, then we are kind of confused. And he, he deals with that as well. What do you guys, how do we, how do we change that narrative? Also, we were talking Mm -hmm. about some of the men that have come out and acknowledged being victims of Mm -hmm. of sexual abuse when they were young, Mike Tyson, like that's, Mm -hmm. I don't think you can get more, Mm -hmm. you know, more uh, machismo or more of a, of the idea of the big black buck or the sexual male than Mike Tyson and yeah. him saying that he was, you know, abused sexually yes. and victimized as a child is a very different picture than we're used to discussing. How can yeah. we start to, how can we first of all address that yeah. and bring mm-hmm. men into this conversation of sexuality as well? And then how do we change this narrative? So I would say um, creating spaces for them to speak. 
Yeah, I think sometimes, from what I hear, and I, I cannot deny that there have been times I may have gotten dis- defensive when um, men may express themselves, you know, mm-hmm. and their feelings and their thoughts, and I feel, you know, offended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, def- you know, off defense and responding. If we have more conversations where we can speak, share our, our stories, our, you know, experiences, and men speak, you know, and share their experiences. And we can do this, you know, in these type of spaces. We can do this in our relationships, you mm-hmm. know, in our families. Um, and somewhere fine, somewhere um, where we can, uh, if, if, the, if the lens is love and healing and we want to move forward, yeah. really, mm-hmm. um, then why not? You know, why shouldn't we not be able to have these conversations, mm-hmm. you know, in, in different spaces and ways where... You know, we feel safe to yeah. say, like, you know, because I think it's it's interesting. You know, we were um, speaking on um, even when we were talking about me too, and when we talk about sharing these stories of maybe trauma or assault, then um, we have uh, men uh, or others or non women saying, "Well, this happens to me too," or "This mm-hmm. happened," you know, like, mm-hmm. "Well, you know," um, which is like, yes, you can share your stories also. But I do not think it's the, um, always appropriate, you know, to share your stories when I decide to share my story. Mm-hmm. If I say, this happened to me, I, I feel this way, this is why I'm, you know, whatever it is. And then to say, well, that happened to me too, you know, yeah. is this can cause so much harm, you know, and prevent me from wanting to share, mm-hmm. you know, are you actually listening to me? You know, so I think having these conversations and um, in addition to when we talk about uh, reflecting and checking messages, I encourage healing, whatever that looks like for you, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's your uh, religious, you know, uh, counselor, a mental health counselor, tantric healer, you know, practitioner, whatever it is looks like for you. It's mm-hmm. like healing because we got to release this shit. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's building up in us. It's like it's tearing us apart. And we talk about agendas. As they, when they talk about P-Valley and anytime we see something that we feel is an attack on the black community, mm-hmm. we say this is an agenda, yeah. you know, against the black community mm-hmm. and black families. And it's like, well, why we aren't talking about what affects our relationships, what mm-hmm. affects our sex, our mm-hmm. sexuality, you know, and the way that we love each other, the way we show up for each other, because that's important, too. It is. You know, and so... Um, so yeah, that's, it is. that's what I believe we could do. Let's talk about the history really quickly about the history of like, cause all these, like I mentioned the, the slavery, you know, mm-hmm. idea of the, of the Mandingo and the buck. And then we also know, I know we talked we, a few months ago, we talked about um, the Sarah Bartman and mm-hmm. how, the, mm-hmm. you know, black women were at that time objectified specifically, you know, mm-hmm. she's, she's good for sex, she's good for bearing children, bearing slaves. So we can mm-hmm. continue this, but, but we've taken those same stereotypes and those same beliefs and, and kind of pit them against each other because mm-hmm. we look at a man that is, you know, that looks like, you know, he's this way and assume that he's great in bed. And in mm-hmm. the same token, women, the same issues that Sarah Bartman was dealing with from her oppressors are things that we're also mm-hmm. doing today. We talked about how um, there's a starter kit for female rappers. Like I gotta have the butt, I gotta have the breast, I gotta have the waist that's snatched to the point that it doesn't even make sense with the ratio, the butt to hip ratio. So how do we attack these stereotypes that weren't given to us by mm-hmm. us? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, one way is to really, <clears throat> my voice is going, but that's okay. <laughs> no, but one way is to really stop looking at sex as just body parts. Mm. So we are reducing each other to a penis, a, a vagina, a vulva, a butt, a wop, some breasts, some wop. Some wop. Like, <laughs> that's what we're reducing each other to. But sexuality is so much more than the mechanics of how you have sex or how you getting down in the bedroom, right? Sexuality influences a lot of aspects of our life. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one thing. We got to move beyond that because mm-hmm. move beyond the physical you know, and look at each Mm -hmm. other as whole people. Mm -hmm. And um, that impacts men as well. So if we're only looking at men as being virile and strong and the black man supposedly have to have have the biggest penis in the world because they got big feet and all of that stuff. Not necessarily Which is not true. true. That is not a correlation. Just let you all know. Don't look at the feet. (laughs) Yes. We were told wrong, ladies. Feet don't mean nothing. You can be wearing a size 14 and still have a four inch penis. That's fine. If that's what you're working with, you just learn how to work with that. (laughs) But 
what when we reduce somebody to the bedroom, when we reduce somebody, we don't allow them to be fully who they are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We don't allow them that space to be open, to be vulnerable, to really say, this is what I like and what I dislike. This is some trauma that I've gone through. This yeah. is why I may react a certain way to certain things. We forget about the relationship building part of sexuality. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying necessarily romantic relationships because you're not going to be romantically involved with everyone, but how we relate to each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what we really have to start looking at. So I think really we got to take sex outside the bedroom and just really start looking at people and not just body parts, humans and spirits and all of that stuff of who we are. I think that's what we really need to start and just start reducing like the BBL starter pack. Like, okay, <laughs> yes, you got a nice set of breasts. You got a nice, but who, mm. who, who are you? What is your essence? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What makes you tick? Right. What, what do you like? What brings you joy? Mm -hmm. Can you really say that you know what brings the person's joy, who you're laying down with? What brings that person joy? Mm -hmm. You know, what do they like? You know, outside of this, what you can bring to their bodies, mm -hmm. who are they? Do you know a little quirky fact about them or something? Mm -hmm. Just stop treating people like objects. That's basically what we objectify each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that's what we really need to start. And to add to that, I'm definitely seeing the whole person, mm -hmm. uh, mind, body. Um, so, but also <laughs> uh, when we talk about the stereotypes is also acknowledge how sometimes uh, these stereotypes or when we do uh, focus on the body, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how that's okay. Yeah. You know, because right. if we historically, we come from so much trauma around our body, mm -hmm. you know, and so making sure that whenever we have conversations, not always, you know, mm -hmm. that it should not always be negative. Yes. You know, if we're mm -hmm. talking about sex, sometimes people just want to fuck. Yeah. You know, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes, some people want to cuddle. Yeah. Sometimes people want to fuck and cuddle. You yep. know, and it's like you can have all of you the above. Have both. Yeah. And you know, and I think if we start having real conversations, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. more real conversations mm -hmm. about sex and sexuality, mm -hmm. it's like either we talking about which I love, wow. wet ass pussy. It's a, I see it as a celebration, a lubricated vagina. Mm -hmm. I know when I drink water, my vagina feels a lot. You know, <laughs> thanks me better. by <laughs> being <laughs> lubricated and sharing with others. You know, and so, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's but that's my interpretation. Right. You know, but you know, but also making sure that we aren't carrying on some of that trauma mm -hmm. and some of that shame from mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. What has been used to oppress us right. you know sometimes it's us policing each other more mm -hmm. than others yeah. mm -hmm. nobody else has have to do anything we police each other so much mm -hmm. whether it's uh different generations yes whether it's men women whether it's different sexual you know sexualities or yeah. identities yeah. we're doing it with with ourselves you yeah. know we're we're causing harm to you know with yeah. each other to because we want to tell one the respectability politics yeah. we, were, we were speaking on this and it's like, I, in order for me to be respected or protected or seen worthy, I need to carry myself so a certain way. way. When yeah, we yeah. know for a fact that it does not always matter okay, how you no. carry yourself. We know this as being black. You know that it is that's not the case. We know yeah. as being women mm -hmm. that is not always the case. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's, I don't, it's interesting, you know, that sometimes we still want to carry on these same, you know, mindset that like, yeah. oh, if you carry yourself, yeah, you know, the true. certain type of way, then no like harm will I, come yes, to you. If I do you the know? right thing. Yeah. But I think a lot of that probably comes back to, I mean, we came, we were, we, many of us came here, our families came here enslaved. So mm -hmm. it was, let me not do this to keep from being, har let me try to yeah. keep from being harmed. Yeah. So if I'm too sad, I don't want to be raped, right? Yes. By the master. So I'm trying to be as, as, as low key as possible and yeah, shrinking yeah. ourselves was a way to stay safe. And so as time has gone on, we haven't been able to really, first of all, address that, address the history and then figure out how to move forward. We are running out of time, but I want each of you ladies to tell us briefly why you do the work that you do and oh, then wow. tell people how they can get in touch with you to find out more <laughs> about the work that you continue to do in this space. Okay. So why I do the work that I do? Well, because I just feel like it's about healing and um, being a black woman raised in the South, we have so much that comes along with our sexuality. And I just felt, cause I've been doing this work since I was 16. And so I just felt that we need to have better conversations we need to break those generational cycles that came from my grandmothers, our mothers, aunts, aunties, all mm -hmm. of that stuff and say, live in who we are fully, 
Mm-hmm. That's why I want us to do have more full lives. And sexuality is one of those things that I just feel strongly about. And that's the way that I feel like I can give back mm-hmm. um, to the world. People do it in different ways. That's just what I do. <laughs> and uh, for those who want to know anything about my work, um, I am the Sensible Sex Expert on Instagram, also on Facebook, SensibleSexpert.com as well. Join me on Instagram. I'm always having fun conversations. No, it's not scientific. No, it's not all of that. I say some real stuff. So if that's what you're expecting, I'm sorry. I'm not respectable in that way. But yes, that's where you can find me, the sensible sex expert. I am Dr. Wendasha Jenkins Hall. Okay. So long story short, (laughs) I do this work um, to be who I needed when I was younger. And I want to be that for others. You know, of all ages. So for the younger women, for... Um, older women from mm-hmm. those who are not identify as women and that's what I'm doing so I um, and so where you can find me <laughs> uh, I am the real hot girl doc um, and that is my name on Instagram and there you can access all my different um, things that I'm doing I offer workshops um, training consulting and I teach and you may find me twerking you know <laughs> online on <laughs> on my page and um, yeah so I love it. I love the way the way you say it. It sounds like you had a, a Megan Thee Stallion samples, like real hot girl doc. Like she got it. Is. Like yes. She got it all together. Thank you, ladies, so much. The work you're doing. I, I've been just so impressed with what you all do because it's a conversation that I wish that I had been able to hear when I was younger. Because I grew up in the church where you didn't you you didn't talk about this stuff. Like mm-hmm. we just did not. Yeah. And if you did, if you wanted to talk about it, something was wrong. Like you were yes. little, you were fast. You were being mm-hmm. you were being too grown, and so. Um, I love the fact that we're breaking stereotypes and we're doing it in so many different ways. The conversation is needed. So hopefully you all enjoy this conversation as well. Stay right there. We'll be right back with a closeout um, on Let's Get Crystal Clear. I think we've been getting crystal clear about our sexuality, but we'll be right back. Well, thank you so much for joining us for today's conversation. I hope you got a little clarity on where we are as black women and are we in charge of our sexuality or are we being controlled by it? Well, one thing's for sure, we're definitely getting more to a place where we are in charge of it because we're having conversations that are much needed. People like Dr. Wendasha and Dr. Clarissa are definitely pushing the culture forward and making sure that we're talking about those hard and uncomfortable conversations that we often don't wanna bring up. Besides the two of them, the people over at, the pink, <laughs> Katori Hall and the crew over at Pea Valley are definitely helping push the culture forward as well because they will not let us look away from things that are happening around us. They're making us face it so we can have the conversation and grow. And that's what we're all about here at Let's Get Crystal Clear. So hopefully we'll see you right back next week for more conversations pushed by social media, but add a little context. I'll see you guys next week.